Hello, I'm Valentin Mandacer from Historic Houses Romania Casa de Epoca, and I would like to present you the entrails of uh, the structural entrails of uh, Little Paris style house of Bucharest. It's the one behind me. It's now in a derelict state, but we can see its uh, building structure. So we can have an idea how these houses were built in the La Belle Epoque period more than 100 years ago. What I call Little Paris uh, style is the provincial interpretation of Western architecture in the La Belle Epoque period, late 19th century up until the Great War in Romania. It's a period of uh, great economic prosperity because the country had money from grain exports, so after the independence of 1878, the locals were able to export without taxes on the international waterways of the Danube, Black Sea and the Straits, straight to uh, the Western markets, and this money were put to good use in this type of uh, architecture. I call it Little Paris. It's a provincial interpretation, as I said, of the Western type architecture architectures, mainly because the locals didn't have experience in uh, the Western times. You have to bear in your mind that what is now Romania has been for about half a millennium under the Ottoman Empire, and obviously the local tradi architectural tradition was Ottoman, and also provincial one, uh, because they were mainly adobe houses or wooden houses. So with the good money from the old exports, they were able to purchase uh, bricks and uh, all of these modern materials for that time late 19th century and put up this provincially interpreted architecture, which I call Little Paris. It's one of the most organic type of houses in Bucharest, and it uh, gives uh, it um, a lot of personality, because it's built basically from brick, lime mortar, uh, plaster, and the more industrial materials, if I, if I can say, are just the uh, glass and the metal and the rest you can source them by yourself. Even the colors are quite natural pigments. Let's get closer and to see the structure of the house. The brick, as you can see here at the base, is uh, industrial one, but in a small runs, not in a big industrial production. Uh, it could be even manufactured. The link between uh, the bricks is lime mortar. You can see here, very good material for Bucharest because lime mortar, in case of earthquakes, is much more plastic. So the house, even if it bends a bit over, doesn't fall down like the houses from the 1930s, which use brittle concrete. They are more, much more dangerous than the, these ones, the old ones. And plaster. Plaster, again, I have over here, lime plaster very natural material. Wooden frame windows, we have them here, or in their glory you can see that on the upper level. We have uh, again plaster materials made in uh, special dyes and forms. This one's probably made from terracotta, these ornaments in neo-rococo manner. And in the middle we have a nice medallion ornament. There in the middle of it, in the old times, is to have painted the monogram of the owner. People are very proud of their monogram, their family name. And uh, you can see that it was also attached, or it wasn't made in situ. So it was made in the form and then attached there. On the roof eaves, you can see the structure of the roof eaves. The bricks are a bit uh, out, and then plaster was mold molded on them with ornaments and the roof if they go with the wooden structure into it. And again, you can see the entrails, as I said, structural entrails of this house. Let's see the garden, what is left of it, actually. It's the house is from sometimes 1880s, 1890s, so and I see that, and I, I date it especially for this uh, road, uh, cast iron uh, pole, for example. In the old times, probably it also had a lamp on top of it, it's typical for 1870s, 80s, uh, from when the house it dates. You can see the entrance behind me, what is left of it, and now the garden is in a very derelict state. Uh, the house is very representative for the identity of Bucharest, comfortable to live because it's natural, as I said, it's an organic type of house, easily brought to its form and glory if you have a good advice, like me, for example, I'm an architectural historian who I can 
offer consultancy at this type of projects, but uh, we live in Bucharest and Romania, people are not very interested in their heritage, unfortunately, and those who have money do not uh, employ the right type of specialist. Uh, if someone has a diploma that's written on it, architect for them is enough, but you need a lot of specialization, as is my case, into this kind of uh, restoration. But in this instance, the house is left like this in order to obtain the demolition permit. We are here in the National Radio Station area. National Radio Station is right here. Prime real estate. And the way to obtain the coveted demolition permit for a protected area like this one is to open the house to the elements and to declare it as being beyond repair. And it's a true trick which is done all over Bucharest and Romania and it's not their invention. They took it from the West. I right? saw so this kind of <coughs> procedures employed even in London or Portugal or Italy, for example. But now we are at least able to see structure and understand how this house is all built. And even if you have a keen eye, you can look through the windows and you can see the painting of the wall from that time and how tall the rooms were. Nice rooms to live in nowadays in tall rooms, but at that time they were from a practical reason. And we are nearer before the electricity and uh, the town hall imposed four rooms in order to have the oil uh, lit lamps or the candles to have enough room between uh, the level of the eye and the ceiling in order to not catch fire. Bucharest was plagued by big fires from time to time. So I hope you liked this uh, podcast, this kind of presentation about the heritage of Bucharest and what is left of it. Not much is going to be left in this uh, rhythm actually. So look at it as long as you can. <laughs> and uh, we'll see each other at the next podcast. Thank you and goodbye.